What's going on guys, it's Michael MGF, and today I'm going to be doing my highly anticipated showcase video to celebrate tonight's release of Deadpool, which is finally dropping here in the US. I honestly have no idea what the release date is for Europe, but regardless, if you plan on seeing the film within the next few days over the weekend, or if you plan on waiting until the DVD release later this year, I highly recommend you don't scroll down until you've seen the film. But for this video that I've had planned for such a long time now, ever since the movie was first announced to be greenlit by Fox, I have Deadpool himself and Colossus, the two standout characters of the film, to me personally, and originally this showcase video was going to have Ajax too, but then I kind of thought to myself, okay, I'm familiar with Deadpool, you know, I'm, I, I'm a Deadpool fan, and I, you know, I love Colossus from the X-Men, it's just, I'm not familiar with Deadpool surrounding characters, so making Ajax, you know, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, Vanessa Carlisle, uh, you know, it, it, Weasel, it's just those weren't, those characters I'm not necessarily familiar with yet. Hopefully they're going to be awesome. And if I walk out of Deadpool tomorrow, because I'm not actually seeing it tonight, I'm seeing it tomorrow. But if I walk out of Deadpool tomorrow and I'm like, holy crap, those characters were awesome and amazing. I have to make them in Lego. Then they'll totally be added to my current slate for 2016. But as of right now, I just decided I'd keep the showcase limited to these two guys, the two characters that I do care about at the moment. So yeah, but regardless though, our first big showcase video for a, the first big movie release of 2016, I could could not be more excited to actually be doing this video, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so Deadpool himself, Wade Wilson. This is going to be probably the longest I've ever talked about two single minifigures in the same showcase, probably in the past year. So bear with me, but as soon as we saw the original Deadpool, you know, test footage, and then the, when the movie was greenlit and we saw Ryan Reynolds in this amazing suit on set for the first time, I had a rough idea of how I was going to make this minifigure in 2016, and, and you know, that plan included painting the eyes to look squinted like this and exactly how you see them here, and then, you know, painting pretty much the rest of his entire suit because there really wasn't any bulk to him or anything like that, so I knew the figure would look exactly like this pretty much for the most part, except, you know, there are a couple things I did not account for. And those two things being the fact that uh, the minifigure would not have an actual, like, helmet piece, and that I would end up painting the designs onto an actual minifigure head, and then also the fact that the minifigure would have a total of 12 accessories and an alternative head. That is the most uh, accessories I've given to any single minifigure ever. And then uh, the alternative head on top of that. I mean, uh, yeah, like I said, gonna be a long video. So, if you didn't already know, Deadpool and Colossus and pretty much all the minifigures I make are fully 100% hand-painted by me. So everything you see, all these designs on these minifigures are all 100% hand-painted. So, uh, just to give you a rundown of these accessories and pretty much the system for how this minifigure it works, um, uh, we'll just try, I'm gonna try to number them, okay? And try to follow me here. This is, this is, you're probably gonna get confused pretty quick. So, uh, accessories one and two are his signature, you know, his signature pair of Desert Eagles. And these are standard minifig cat, uh, black Desert Eagles. And I painted the top halves of them in a gunmetal color. And then the secondary color being like a really dark gray, some black details toward the back on each one. And I tried to keep them looking as identical as I could while also adding a, you know, a protective layer of a uh, sealant on them because minifigure hands can sometimes be a little bit hostile towards accessories and also themselves when you put paint on them, which is why you really don't see me putting a lot of paint on a lot of uh, minifigures that I make, you know, on their hands. So then right above that, if we go ahead and remove these Desert Eagles for right now, right above that, accessories three and four are the Tiny Tactical Glove Tops. I use Tiny Tactical Glove Tops on probably too many minifigures, to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then accessory number five is the actual uh, painted sheath piece. This is a, yeah, I'm sure you've probably seen these sheath pieces before. Um, you know, this sword sheath is something that I knew I was going to use for the minifigure. That was this was also in the initial plan, and uh, so it's painted in black. I've got a couple details on the front of it as well. If you didn't see those already, so yeah. Then accessories number six and seven are these regular black swords that I have in it at the moment. And originally it was going to be just these and only these because this is the most accurate choice and this is the go-to option, right? But then I realized the second I paint, you know, the silver onto the blades themselves. Uh, yeah, the problem there is either they're not going to fit into the sword sheath piece itself to begin with, or that the paint is just simply not going to survive. So, 
The alternative I came up with is so overly and unnecessarily complex, I, again, you will probably get lost, so try to bear with me, um, but these, these, these regular black swords, these regular black Lego swords, these act as pretty much the swords themselves actually in the sheaths, and they're idle, you know, he, Wade Wilson is not using them, he's got his Desert Eagles out, right? And so that's what they're meant to represent here in the sheath. So if we go ahead and remove accessory number six and seven here, we've got accessories number uh, uh, eight and nine. I'm trying not to lose track myself. So eight and nine are a pair of Brickforge uh, Ninjatos that they refer to them as on their site. One problem with these, and uh, th these are these these swords are highly regarded by pretty much all customizers because they're just so awesome looking and they have such a great silver print on them. Uh, but the problem with these is, uh, I, I, you know, this was the option that I thought of, okay, I'll do these. And granted the sword, uh, like the actual wrist guards themselves are circular when uh, in the movie Deadpool's are actually square like the actual Lego ones so then the problem with these is uh, these don't actually fit into the sword sheath piece, so this would this would not have worked either. So uh, that's why I have all these different uh, you know additional sword pieces. So yeah, accessories number eight and nine here are the actual swords themselves deployed, and then these fall completely out of the picture. And then accessories number ten and eleven are another pair of these regular black swords. I took another pair, cut off the handles, and then painted these little gray slits onto the tops of them to represent where the swords go in. And let's just pretend that the wrist guards on these are actually a part of the, sh the sword sheath itself, because that's really what I was trying to imply when I made these an additional part of the minifigure. So, uh, yeah, um, putting them in, though, you can see it works, right? It's complicated, but it works, and it gets the job done. So, uh, yeah, there's that. And then if we go ahead and remove uh, the one of these swords here, at least, I guess we'll just go ahead and remove both of them. Accessories number uh, 12. I was saying accessories because, to be honest with you, I was expecting to be there to be another one, but then I realized we're actually at the last one here. Accessory number 12, the final one, is just this regular... Uh, regular minifig cat pad, right? It's this, this white minifig cat pad piece that they have. And uh, what I did though, is you might notice, I did my best to portray the drawing that we saw in the first test footage for the film that was leaked. And then it was later, you know, carried on into the actual film itself in the first trailer we saw it. And uh, I did my best to paint in crayon kind of. Even though, obviously, I didn't use actual crayons, I tried to make it look like crayons, so the paint for it is, you know, really messy and not meant to look uh, decent by any means, but you'll notice it's not necessarily totally accurate because the space I have on this little mini the cat pad piece is, a li is, you know, pretty limited. So, the speech bubble is higher than it really should be because the speech bubble should be right next to Deadpool's head. It should have an exclamation mark next to the ouchy part uh, that I painted on, you know, the actual text, but I did my best to fit it all on, and to be honest with you, I think it turned out really awesome and is hands down the best accessory I've given the minifigure next to the, his pair of Desert Eagles. So, okay, that's it for all the accessories. Are you still here? I hope so. You're probably wondering what the hell is going on. To be honest with you, I have no idea. If we go ahead and just remove this whole thing, just so you're not even thinking about it anymore. The minifigure that is left here is just all of the paintwork that I put into this, all right here on, you know, this standard set of minifigure parts. And um, you might be wondering, why did I not you know, make an actual, you know, headpiece, you know, a helmet, something like that for Deadpool. Because, you know, a lot of people would argue that you totally can and that you can make it look good. And to be honest with you, I disagree. I don't think taking a flash cowl like I used on Captain America and so many other minifigures would really work for Deadpool. Because in the movie, Wade Wilson at some point uh, gets kind of blown up, as you probably know, small spoiler. And so uh, he ends up looking like a testicle with teeth, right? So what I decided to do, I, you know, while staring at a lot of pictures of Deadpool's costume, Ryan Reynolds in the suit, I mean, it's the mask is really tightly wrapped around his head to begin with, and he's bald underneath that. So I don't really see how something, you know, that I use on, like, Captain America for his helmet, you know, on, on Daredevil for his helmet, that's not really something I thought, you know, would transition well or really, you know, that's not something I, I thought that was just too big for an actual like mask that just goes over someone's head. So that's really, that was my logic when deciding to paint all the designs onto the minifigure head itself. So 
Yeah, um, and the designs that I did paint on do extend over the top and onto the back as well, so there's that. Um, and one thing that I did do, before I talk about the rest of the, de the detail I painted onto the minifigure, if we remove the main head that I have for Deadpool, I did make an alternative head. And this head is just the standard Wade Wilson head, all burnt up. I mean, it's exactly, you know, it, it's, it's the older avocado that had sex with an older avocado, and this was the Lego version of that result. And that's really what I tried to betray here. And you can see uh, the face itself actually turned out really nice. And the inspiration I took for this head and the skin, tel the sk the skin color uh, in particular was from the Anakin Skywalker head from that uh, Mustafar version of him in the Emperor Palpatine shuttle from like 2010 or 11. And then I pretty much just kind of took inspiration from that. And then I did just pretty much painted the entire head uh, and I weathered it in this brown color. You know, I know you'll notice I added some more pale colors in there too to represent some other skin tones. Um, I have a lot of marks and scars all added in there randomly. And it's just, it's, you know, I know a lot of you guys, a bunch of you guys anyway, said that I should have done more to it. But to be honest with you, I kept working at it. And this was really as far as I could get. This was as far as I could, you know, go with this without, you know, any detail kind of looking like it was overstepping its boundaries. So that's really, this is really what I came up with. You'll notice I have the little scar right up here on the forehead. I added some wrinkles because uh, I knew that was something I wanted to add to the design going in if I were to make the head and of course obviously I ended up doing so the eyebrows are several different colors of tan and brown all mixed together and then uh, the mouth itself has a bunch of different marks around it as well to represent even more wrinkles and other things like that just to make his face look as as messed up as I could so yeah, um, then the rest of the minifigure, I do want to talk about uh, the, the uh, strap on the front there. You'll notice the strap is three-dimensional. The main strap on the front of the torso is three-dimensional. That's something I do, you know, whenever I'm given the opportunity. But unfortunately, to make sure that it would not conflict with the actual sword sheath piece itself, I decided to make it flat and uh, 2D on the back of the torso. So it's a little inconsistent, but it still does work for the most part. And I'm still satisfied with the minifigure, even regardless, you know, if the strap on the back is not three-dimensional. So, yeah. Now, one other thing that I did want to make three-dimensional, actually a few, couple things that I wanted to make three-dimensional on the minifigure that I unfortunately could not. You might remember on like Captain Phasma, for instance, I made her the actual, you know, the, 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 uh, you know, the actual pouches on her belt three-dimensional. But I couldn't do that for Deadpool for one reason, and that one reason being uh, the actual design had to overlap from the torso onto the belt. And so... I couldn't do that. And I could obviously, you know, glue it on, you know, just pretty much just cut them all, cut all the pieces in half. So that when I took the torso and the legs and, you know, joined them together, you would still have those three dimensional pouches, right? But you would still have such a huge slit running through each one that I just didn't see how it could work. And thus I painted on the belt. I painted it onto the front and I painted it onto the back. And I definitely really like the pouches on the back, to be honest with you, more than the ones on the front. So yeah. Um, then I also do have the holsters painted onto the sides of his legs as well, the Desert Eagle holsters. And they're definitely one of my favorite parts of the minifigures detail that I, you know, that I painted on the knee pads. It's all there. Uh, it does extend, you know, as far as I could, you know, get it on, you know, the actual tops of the legs. And for the most part, guys, this is really all the, this is the entirety of the figure. I think I've pretty much covered it all. And of course, the detail wraps around all four sides of the minifigure legs like I do on all my minifigures. And so uh, I think that's it. That's all for Deadpool. Oh my God. I really hope you were able to follow me through all of that because again, I know it's a lot and you're probably just sitting there watching this video like what the hell. Um, but okay, you know, I'm just going to stop talking. Let's go ahead and take a look at Colossus. So, yeah, Colossus. Now, in Deadpool, I really don't know what version of Colossus this is supposed to be because they recast Daniel Cudmore from X-Men Days of Future Past and the previous films that he was in as well, and uh, this is supposed to be the same timeline now after the Days of Future Past reset because Deadpool is existing in the same universe, apparently, but then they recast that actor, as I said, and, and, and so there's a, and now he's apparently Russian. They got a guy to do the voice separately and then another guy to do the motion capture, so there's two actors playing him and I don't know how he would look in human form because that's the case so yeah uh, that's a little confusing to me but making that this new version of Colossus in Lego was a whole other level of confusing because one thing about Colossus that is really obviously iconic to him several different things his height how bulky he is the muscle all of that 
had to be brought over onto this minifigure. And the last time I used Toy Story parts for a character was Ultron from Avengers Age of Ultron in 2015. And that minifigure was met with a lot of flack because, you know, it, it wasn't, that figure needed to be more bulky, right? And so I, uh, I you know, to, to make sure I, again, I didn't repeat the same mistakes of last year, even though I later fixed that with a uh, Breakthrough Army chess piece. The point here was I knew I had to sculpt onto Colossus to make sure I captured all of the right looks. But before I even did that, deciding to use the Toy Story arms and legs was a no-brainer because Colossus towers over everyone else in the movie. He's huge. And not only that, but he's huge. He's not big enough to be a big fig. And I had a lot of you guys, a lot of people pitching the idea of using a big fig and I'm just like, okay, but then I wouldn't be making the movie version of him anymore. So this was really the only option that I saw. And I know there are a lot of people out there who really don't agree with the Toy Story parts. You know, these, these extended arms, these extended legs, because they're too long, quote unquote. And while I can see that, that point, I don't see that on these minifigures really it doesn't bother me nearly as much i don't really see that as being too big of an issue especially when i do my best to right the wrongs of the last time i used these legs on ultron and i made sure to sculpt as much as i could as much as i thought would be necessary to correct all those proportional problems that the toy story parts might present and so what i did was i added an entire i sculpted an entire layer onto the front of the torso the front of the belt onto the back of the minifigure onto the back of the belt piece and then I also sculpted three separate layers onto the arms themselves each and so this is really where I, I heard a lot of you guys you know saying that th this you know this minifigure kind of I guess wasn't necessarily you know satisfactory but I can't imagine myself still making custom minifigures if I didn't have you guys to share them with and to gather feedback with. So if you love Colossus here, great, because I do too. If you don't, great. I'd love to hear how you think I can improve or you know your your constructive criticism down in the comments because I think my buddy Billy Bill Bobful from Flickr has really been the only one to actually do just that. So so far. So I mean that's really kind of sad because, you know, that's what this community is all about, building each other up, right? So, I mean, if your comment is to just tear me down, that's fine too. I mean, I'm glad that my figure has had at least some kind of effect on you, I guess, even if it's not a good one. Regardless, I'm satisfied with this minifigure, and at the end of the day, this is my hobby. These, this, this minifigure, Colossus here, was meant, you know, was, was created, you know, for my own collection. You know, that this is what this is all about. Again, it's my hobby, and I'm sharing it with you guys. This figure, I thought, turned out pretty sweet, especially with, you know, the additional, you know, the, the sculpting work that I did on the arms, which, I mean, I was basing it off of only one picture on Colossus, so granted, I think a version two of the muscles could have worked a little better, but I still am really satisfied with how I painted them too. Um, you can see I actually uh, painted them in a base color of silver and then I washed them with dark gray to do my best to match the color, the chrome color of the official, uh, like, you know, the official chrome color that you can see the head is sporting here. And then uh, another thing that I want to address is why I didn't use, you know, the the, the uh, mirror, you know, chrome spray paint color that I know a lot of people have been doing on uh, like Captain Phasma, for instance. And that's something I have decided I really don't want to do because the problem is spray paint really isn't that sturdy when you're putting, you know, hair pieces over it and different things like that. I feel like that paint just would not survive. And even if it would, you know, initially, I feel like that's not something that would last. So that's why I didn't do that. And then the face, I think, turned out pretty sweet. And you'll notice that I did not add pupils to Colossus's face. And that's something that is pretty much completely accurate to how he appears in the actual film and pretty much everywhere. Um, so I did try to put on pupils in Photoshop and it looked terrible. It just did not, it does not work for the character. Colossus simply does not have pupils. And when you have, you know, eyes that are a silver color and you try to put, you know, pupils on there that, you know, that are any other color, it's just, it's really strange looking. And that's why I didn't do that. And then the hairpiece, I'm sure you can recognize, I don't really know the name of the hairpiece, but uh, I, I, I'll, I'll display a picture of it in the corner here. And you can see what I did was I took that hairpiece and just, 
just sanded the crap out of it. And uh, this was an entire day of sanding. I mean, a full day of just sanding this thing, buffing it, making sure it was, you know, clean enough to where I could paint over it and uh, make what you see here. So, uh, you know, what I really would have liked to have had this hairpiece a little shorter. Yeah, because the hairpiece is, you know, obviously not, is a little too tall. And that's something that I'm not, you know, overly fond of, but it really, in my opinion, doesn't look that bad. And so uh, the, pro the reason I did not uh, sand the top of it any further was simply because I could already slightly, just ever so slightly, start to see the impression of where the stud of the head is supposed to go in. And uh, if you've ever sanded the top of a hairpiece before, you would know that if you go too far, you break a, a circular hole right through the top of it. And that's what would have happened if I went any further and made this attempt to make this hair piece any shorter than it already is so yeah the another thing i added to colossus was this like metallic gunmetal tint to the to the entirety of his hair because uh you know like the steel that uh you know goes over his you know the organic steel that goes all, all over his skin on the actual character it does uh kind of leave a t you know a metallic tint on his actual hair too even though it is still black so yeah there's that and then another thing i did on colossus was i added this pattern that you see on here this dotted pattern on certain areas on the chest and uh, you'll also notice i did add the little x-men symbol onto his belt as accurate to how it appears in the film and then uh, on the back you can see that dotted pattern along with all the dark red designs continuing there so yeah now the uh, the sculpting of the chest I did did end up being a little uneven and to be honest with you I don't know how that happened and it wasn't until I painted it did I realize it actually happened so it's not perfect and uh, that's just something that really doesn't bother me either to be honest with you because it's really not terribly noticeable you know at first glance it's something that you only notice when you know after having analyzed over analyzed the figure and and uh, yeah, so then the uh, legs themselves, the actual Toy Story legs that I painted here in a base color of black before adding the dark gray boots that you see on here along with the little uh, bit of detail that I put on the front of them, uh, you'll notice that the like the whole rest of the design that you see on these legs are actually, uh, <laughs> you guys probably know that I am honestly probably a little too fond of the Death Star Trooper leg designs. If you remember in 2014, the Death Star Troopers were introduced and they had this great, you know, standard black pants design uh, printed onto those legs. And I have loved that design ever since. I think it works so well on so many different characters. I've painted it and used those legs on so many minifigures. So I did that here on Colossus and I just pretty much made like an extended version for this, you know, for these Toy Story legs, I made like an elongated version of that same design and I painted the pockets onto the sides as well. So yeah, um, of course, you know, all that detail does continue onto the sides as well, even though because it's just a basic, you know, pair of black pants that I'm, you know, trying to portray here, there really isn't a lot of detail to paint on aside from what you see on the front and a little bit of continuation of that design onto the back. So yeah, there you go. That's it for Colossus. And I, again, I know a lot of you guys, this is probably, you guys are probably gonna be pretty torn on this one. And that's totally cool. That's why I do this is to hear from, you know, what you guys have to say and to gather opinions. And, uh, you know, so definitely leave your constructive criticism down in the comments as uh, it really, as I say, at the end of these videos all the time, it really does mean a lot and always goes a long way, guys. So yeah, Colossus, a minifigure that I honestly think turned out pretty awesome. Wait! You may be wondering why the red suit. Well, that's so bad guys can't see me bleed. This guy's got the right idea. He wore the brown pants. What about me? All right, guys, and there you go, the Deadpool showcase video. And as I said at the start of the video, of course, there is spinoff potential, depending on how much I love the movie, depending on how much I, you know, connect to the characters that I didn't make and that you didn't see in this video. So we'll see how it goes. I'll definitely let you guys know over on the social medias. But for right now, if you enjoyed this showcase video, these two minifigures, or maybe find yourself inspired to make your own minifigures from Deadpool, be sure to let me know by dropping this video a like below and or your opinion on either of these two minifigures figures down in the comments and as I said just a minute ago I know Colossus is not going to be met with just straight up you know love and that's totally cool let me know what you think I'd love to hear your unswayed opinion down in the comments as it always means a lot and definitely goes a long way guys and uh yeah I've got so much in the pipeline for 2016 it's going to be my biggest year ever for custom minifigures I have some showcase videos coming up this year that are going to be double triple quadruple the size of this one you are going to see 
so many minifigures from me this year. The next big project I have in front of me is for Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. And after this video, as soon as this video goes up and I see the movie, I am just going straight for Batman v Superman. It is going to be so insane getting those figures done on time and just making the best minifigures I can for a movie that I and so many other people have waited so long to see. And uh, yeah, you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, by the way, because that's where you're going to see all of it first. And that's why I always recommend it, because as I always say, it's so much easier to post photos of, of minifigures that I have yet to finish or work in progress photos, because that's just not something I can do on any YouTube channel. So that's why, again, I always suggest you check those out. But aside from that, guys, that is it for the Deadpool Showcase video. Again, not totally sure if I'll have any other minifigures to follow these, you know, from the Deadpool film. But for right now, this is it. Hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. All right. Bye. Of GF and today I'm gonna be doing a Mommy look Spider-Man Ma'am, this film is rated R. Are you sure you want Oh yeah, it's fine. Okay. I, I, this is confusing. I can't, damn it. Character, when I say that, I mean, obviously his two signature pair, uh, his two signature pair? I don't think he could have had a worse selection of words there, man. That's, that's, that's great, Ross. Most, fuck. You look like the inside of other people's assholes. You look like the topographical map of Utah. You look like an avocado had sex with an older avocado. Dude, pick one already. Yeah, those are two, uh, motherfuck itself on the, uh, yeah. <sighs> the, 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 uh, this is going to be the end of me.